Hello, I'm Chris of Christie's Over the Mountain Crochet and Crafts. Today I'll be talking a lot about crochet, about the mini Christmas crochet along, about the Overbrook baby blanket, and then the Overbrook Afghan. Um, I'm excited about that. It is basically the Overbrook baby blanket in worsted weight yarn with more stitches and newer stitches, stitches that are not in the um, Overbrook baby blanket. So if you're here, hang on. I'll talk about those things in just a moment. It's good to have you on my side of the mountain. Let's talk about the mini crochet along, uh, mini Christmas uh, in July. So I was so excited to be able to finish this. Um, this is a drop over lace application. So really, as long as you know how to make the basic Moses basket, you can add different stitches here if you'd like. The red one up. Um, the white one gets a glare on it. It'll have this little doll dress hat pattern. It'll have the, min the miniature Moses basket that these dolls fit into. And then, they're, um, then the, the poncho, the round puzzle poncho. Those three patterns, well, really four because you get a hat and a dress. Those four will be in the mini Christmas in July bundle. All right, so get that out of the way. I'm talk about these. I hope you're enjoying these patterns. Get her hat on, right? <laughs> I hope you're enjoying these patterns. Um, I really enjoyed making this Moses basket. I think it looks Christmassy. I think this trim looks like frosting. I think you could do a lot with this design. I think a gingerbread looking uh, Moses basket would be next with the girl, the little dolls, maybe in a gingerbread boy outfit and a gingerbread girl outfit. I think that would be really cute. Um, so that's all that, that's all there is to say about the mini Christmas in July. I'm putting them into a bundle with these three, four, four patterns because there's two patterns here and the poncho, the round poncho. So I'll put them in those out of the way. Let's talk about the Overbrook baby blanket a little bit. A lot of you have been working on this crochet along and you've noticed that these color runs are staying wider. That is because I cut the yarn and I wound them into bowl, balls. <laughs> I didn't wind them into ball. And then balls. I continued to crochet and I crocheted until it, I got the width of color that I wanted. It's not that hard to do. Now, one thing someone mentioned to me is uh, the joining of the yarn, and I've talked about how this monofilament thread just kind of goes off on its own when you cut the yarn, so you need to leave a long tail, and I use the magic knot. I'll put a video up for the magic knot here, um, hopefully in the next couple days, if I can get that done. If not, it'll be the end of the week, because if you want longer and wider color runs, you will need to cut your yarn and wind them into balls so you can have the wider, longer color runs. Now, I've been talking about the worsted weight afghan that I have been working on. It has all of these stitches, except I'm adding more stitches, and I'm using Red Heart Super Saver. You can use any worsted weight that you would like, um, and then I've, I'm doing a different thing with the colors and I'm adding more stitches. I'm going to pull back and hold this up and hold still because I know when I move I pixelate a little bit sometimes and I never know when I am going to. So let me pull back. It's really big. It's really large. So basically the center is all cream and you can see that Babe, you can see the uh, stitches that are in the Overbrook baby blanket are exactly the same. You have the shell stitches, then you have the um, shells with ears, but then I started changing colors. I started adding new colors. This isn't finished, by the way. I'm not done. Then I added color in the transition rounds and I added color in the seven treble rounds. And you will notice that this stitch right here on the top is not in the baby, um, the baby blanket. So I'm adding this stitch. This was in the Overbrook um, poncho. Now, how there are so many different ways you can add color 
if you are using solid colors, I like adding color in the transition rounds. You can add a contrasting color in all seven of those transition rounds, or you can just choose to do two or three in the very middle. This section is just the single crochet rows, three rows, three rounds, the single, hi Karen, how are you? It's always good to see someone I went to high school with come in here. <laughs> I love that. And um, this is a single crochet round in the cross stitch round or X stitch, and then the single crochet round where this one is inclusive of all seven of the colors. And I'll be experimenting as I make this bigger, I'll be experimenting with colors again. I may do a, a color change where it's just single crochet rounds on the outside edges would be the only color change. Now this has one, two, three, four, five, six, um, Yep, six rounds of seven treble shells, and four of them are a contrasting color, and two of them are not. So you can really, the sky is the limit with the color. Um, like I said, the center. Let's see, I'm using, let me see what the colors are, in case you were wondering. I'm using Aaron in Red Heart Super Saver. I'm using Frosty Green, and I'm using Buff. So I think those three colors go really well together. Let me clear off my table. I'm tossing my yarn off to the side because I want to get to these fabric pumpkins. I want to see if I can, if I can have a live demonstration of a craft here while you're watching. So as a refresher, this is one of my pumpkin designs, a crochet pattern. This does not have the stem in it, but I've made a leather stem to set down in there, but I have an idea for a different type of stem. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But this is the textured pumpkin. I have the crochet pattern. I believe they're free on my website. If they are, I'll put them in the links. If not, you can purchase them. They're not very much money. Um, you can purchase them at Etsy and Ravelry, but there are three different sizes and they're really big and I've made a, made a pumpkin tower out of them, put lace on them, they're really pretty. Then last year I made the this pumpkin, it's 36, and a half inches around and then 11 inches across the top and it it has the green leather stem i like this real well this is all single crochet this pumpkin has textured stitches to it i like this one too but this one is big i used red heart ombre and i think it was salsa hot salsa so i called this my big and spicy pumpkin you can see the color gradation i love the colors in this but I've also fallen in love with, uh, in the past, with making fabric pumpkins, and they're very simple, and I want to show you how. Um, I have a few supplies. Let me go over the supplies with you. I have three different colors of pumpkin colors, what I think are fallish colors, and I have black felt. I want to try a new technique on the stem. I'm not going to demonstrate that today. I think that would be too overwhelming, but I'll talk to you about how I want to do that for the stem. Then I have poly pellets, little poly pellets, those little plastic poly pellets. I have a, a pantyhose, a knee-high pantyhose to put the poly pellets in. I'm going to try this. I'm not sure if it will work, but Hildy Joe, it's by Hildy Joe, has different colored twines. And I want to use that to make the dents in the pumpkins. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna have to go to crochet thread. But I'm going to try this. I want that little bit of a rustic fall look. So I'm going to try making my dents in my pumpkin with this Hildy Joe twine. So I'm going to set all of these, this, I'm going to set that right there. And of course I need an ink pen. I'm going to use a long upholstery needle. Someone got me onto that a couple years ago. That was a great idea. A long upholstery needle. I've got a little bit of something or something to decorate the pumpkin with. I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. And then I came across this. I want to show you. I was at Joann's and I noticed that they had little burlap uh, pumpkin leaves on their pumpkins, and I thought that's cute. That would be really cute, and that would go really well with the Hildy Joe. And but most burlap you get 
it didn't have the backing that these leaves had. And I went to Michael's and I found laminated burlap. So it has like a plastic edge on it so you can cut out forms with it. And then you can, uh, they, it won't unravel. If I cut it out in the sh shape of a leaf, it's gonna stay in the shape of a leaf. So I'm excited about that. Now, let me see if I can, I've also got a plate. This plate is going to make my first pumpkin. I'll use it and I've got scissors and I've got thread and, and all of that. So how I, let me turn the camera down. Let me spread this fabric out first. I got a couple, I got about a yard, I think, of this fabric. I got this fabric at Joann's, by the way. It was on sale because it was fall fabric. So I'm going to put my plate right here. This will make a fairly small pumpkin. And I'm just gonna trace with my ink pen all the way around. And if you'll bear with me, I'm going to cut this out very quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just giving me a guideline. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact I love um, making oval shapes and then stitching those and making them, and this is all hand stitching, making them an oblongish type pumpkin because most pumpkins are not perfectly round. But for this project, I want to make a tower. I want the largest pumpkin on the bottom. Let me get that out of the way. This will be my medium pumpkin. So I'm going to trace a, I'm not, actually, I'm not even gonna trace around this. It, I am just going to cut about, um, what is it, about four inches. I'm just gonna cut about four inches around. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I might have one side that's flat, which it looks like I'm gonna have one side that's slightly flat. You can't make a mistake with this. Okay, so that will be my middle pumpkin. It's looking a little odd, but it, it doesn't matter if this is a little bit odd. Now I'm going to cut out this dark color. Now I will only demonstrate one pumpkin here. I'll go to Facebook and demonstrate the second pumpkin, and then I'll go to Instagram and demonstrate the last pumpkin. All right, so let's lay this out. I'm going to want to cut several inches around this one also. Let's see, am I good enough? Yeah. Yep, I'm good. Let's just eyeball it. I have also, a few years ago, I made pumpkins out of sweet rolls. I sewed the strips together, then cut them out and made pumpkins out of those sweet rolls and they were beautiful. Some of them were pastel. I'll see if I can find the photos and show you how to show you what they look like. I decorated some of them with jewels. I sold them at the Black Walnut Festival the last year that we had the Black Walnut Festival. So that one is considerably larger. I will have a set of pumpkins that will graduate in size. Now let me sew this one together for you. It's very simple, but before I sew that together, let me go ahead. I don't want a large amount of poly pellets in this one because it is on the size of small. So let me use my little pitcher and dump some poly pellets down in this. Whoops. Let me stretch it out. There we go, that's about all I want. I don't think I want any more. I'm going to tie two knots Now I'm going to tie a second knot and then I'm going to cut between the knots. That way I can just continue to use this knee high 
pantyhose. They're pretty inexpensive. There we go. Now I'm just gonna cut right there. Now I'll set that off to the side. I'll use that, and the thing about that is it will sit, I gotta get rid of those extras, just throw them off, I'll vacuum those up later. Sit right in the middle, and then when you make your um, dents, the needle will go right through there. Now, as a, in, I've been desperate before and ran out of these poly pellets, and I went out to the um, the driveway that we, well, I have a pile of rocks, actually, that I use. They're river rocks, and I brought in rocks, and I washed them, and I put them in pantyhose. I don't recommend that because children like to throw this type of thing at each other. I've had that experience before, but anyway. So, now I have needle and thread, and I'm just going to fold it over a quarter of an inch, and it doesn't matter if your stitching shows, and just start taking long basting stitches. It won't take long. All right, I'm all the way around. And as you can see, all you have to do is baste those stitches. Just give them a pull and a tug. Now I don't want to close it up too tight because I still need to add the stuffing. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to loosen it up. I'm going to add stuffing. Just a tiny bit more. All right. Now, okay. Now that's a nice looking pumpkin. I have my thread pulled tight. I'm going to go ahead and take a little knot right here. I'm holding it with my left hand and just take a little, make a little knot. All right, now I'm going to go across. That helps close up that hole a little bit. Pull that, and then go across the north, south, east, west. So now I'm going east and west. There we go. That's looking nice. It feels nice too. The poly pellets in the bottom make it feel nice. One more stitch and cut that off. Now it's time to make the dents. It's a cute little pumpkin but it needs dents in it. So let's grab this long needle. I don't, I feel like this needle might be longer than what I need. And let's grab a piece of this twine. I'm afraid I will have a lot of friction with this, but let's just see. Now when I have a small needle, this will go through just fine. But when I have a small eye, if I can't get my product through the eye of the needle. I put scotch I put scotch tape on the end of it and kind of like make it really small. Let's see if this goes through. All right, I'm going through the center. Went through the poly pellet bag. Okay. Oh, it's going through without any problems. Woohoo! All right, I'm going to hold on to the now. I'm going to make my dents north, south, east, and west. So I'm going to hold on to this. I'm 
Actually, I'm going to make my first dent. That's what I need to do. I'm going to tie this into a knot, but I want my knot over the hole. Oh, that looks good. So let me tie that into a knot. Square knot, which is right over left, left over right. Okay, so we have our first dent. Now let's pull this around exactly opposite and go through to the top. As long as this works, it's wanting to go through my, there we go. It's working. This might be a puny pumpkin by the time I'm done. <laughs> there we go. That's a little off. I'm gonna loosen it up and pull it back this way. There we go. Now, hold on tight to it. Go ahead and make a complete wrap around this pumpkin and then go down through the center it looks let me get that out of the way looks like this I'm going to make a complete wrap and then go down through the center again you have to hang on to this you have to hang on to it Coming through the center again. This one tail is in the way, but I need that tail. I want to use it later for some to secure. Oh, I'm so happy that this twine is just going through without any problems. Let's lose, let's shove some of this over to the, even out my dents. All right, it's looking pretty even. Let's pull it tight. Now, if you want, you can leave it like this, which I, I'm going to leave it like this. Or if you would, when you make a bigger pumpkin, you may want to go all the way around again and go, which that actually looks pretty nice, and go down through the center again. Actually, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. <laughs> I'm pickled. All right, let's put another dent in here. Let me get it so it's not going through so much fabric. There we go. Pull that tight. Whoops, I think I just I think I just undid some of my work. There we go. There we go. And now I'm going to go all the way around. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm glad I did that. That looks so much nicer, doesn't it? I'm going to go down through the center again. The, the key is, is ending up going down through the center because we have these extra little threads or whatever we want to call them, pieces of twine. There we go. Now we have those extra pieces. Now this is a little bit hard with this long needle. If I had a shorter needle, it would be easier, but I'm going to go through there. Whoops. Now I need a crochet hook. See my yarn, my thread is getting short. I'll be going through and then through a second one, catching a little bit of the fabric. That's too much fabric. There we go. Got a little piece of fabric and pull that through. 
and that will tighten all of that down. Try to go underneath this one. Underneath that one. Make sure my... Tighten it down. And we have a little pumpkin. Now I'm going to pull that on up through to the top. Push that through to the top. Untie those. I'll make a little stem. Let me wrap that up underneath there. I'll make a little stem. And how uh, I saw a unique stem at Joann's, and I thought this can be duplicated so easy. It was made out of felt. I'm going to try to demonstrate how it should be made. I don't, I'm not going to, but there we go. That's a little pumpkin, nice, cute little pumpkin. So how they how they made the felt stem was they cut. Oh, I'd say it was that. Will, this will be too big for this little little pumpkin, and that's not very straight. Let me trim that off. That looks better. All right. They folded it in half. They brought both ends in. And then just rolled it and rolled it and rolled it. This is way too long. And rolled it. Then they glued the Dickens out of this. And I think they put a finish on it, but then that made the pumpkin. This is way too big for this little pumpkin. Let me try to make a small one. Hold on. Let's get rid of that. Let's try to make a small one. And then just start rolling. Really tight. I would say you're gonna need more. I would say that's all I need right there. But I don't want that end there, so let me cut. Cut that off again. I bring my ends to the center and just roll really tight. There we go. That is a nice looking little stem. And then that would, oh, that is cute. Isn't that cute? I think that is really cute. All right, so that's all I have today. I hope you enjoyed the pumpkin tutorial. <laughs> I hope it was as fun for you as it was for me. I hope I didn't bore you, but it was good to have you guys. Uh, don't forget to um, all pumpkin, let me move the camera up so I can see you guys again. <laughs> This is really a cute pumpkin. It's really solid. I think I could use that for a pin cushion. <laughs> it's about that size. So this was dinner plate size. The others will be bigger. Well, it was good to have you all on my side of the mountain. If there's anybody that has any questions, you know, if you have any questions, just ask me. Um, I have some fall designs coming up. I plan to have the Overbrook tea ready very soon. And I just... I'm looking forward to this crafting season. I don't know if you are or not, but I'm really looking forward to the, uh, this year's crafting season. And I'll try to remember to get links to the pumpkins that I've already made. Um, Juliana Carney Thanks. made these earrings for me and sent them to me. She, uh, The children at church, actually, I wore these to church this morning because I knew I was going live, so I wore the outfit I was going to go live in. And I wanted red because of, you know, many Christmas in July. And the little girls were like, oh, let me see your earrings, Miss Chris. Let me see. And they were, uh, the teenagers noticed them first. And then the little girls, every one of them had to touch my earrings. They were very fascinated. <laughs> so Juliana did a really anyway, good job. It was good to have you on my side of the mountain. I hope you'll come again soon. I'll see you later. Bye.